I'm Molly Berger, Associate Dean in the College of Arts and Sciences at Case Western Reserve University. In 2006, the college was awarded a three-year, $205,000 grant by the McGregor Fund for its initiative, the Worldwide Learning Environment, or WLE as we like to call it. The goal of the project was to develop new and innovative ways to build international experiences into the educational lives of our undergraduates. Our plan was to capitalize on the university's strength in advanced communication technologies and connect our students to peers, faculty, experts, and institutions around the world. We awarded 19 extraordinary mini-grants for ideas that span the globe as well as the disciplines. The projects have transformed the way these classes are taught and have fueled a heightened curiosity about the world in our students. Please join us now for a whirlwind tour around the worldwide learning environment. This experiment was essentially to take some marama bean, which is a small bean that has better nutritional characteristics than soya bean and peanuts, and try to see with um, people in Namibia and South Africa whether we can develop this into a food crop for resource poor farmers. We've had both the faculty member and students from Namibia come and visit Case Western Reserve University and interact in the course and we've also set up video conferencing links with both Namibia and South Africa so the students in every class can actually talk to the students and the faculty members in Southern Africa. This class was taught simultaneously to the students in Turkey and the students here at CWRU so I was sitting in a studio with my students at CWRU, lecturing to them. And my students, 5,000 miles away and seven hours in time difference in Turkey, were, were listening in and watching. Marie Lathers, who was program director for French and Francophone Studies at the time, wrote a grant proposal to try and set up a study abroad experience for students over the summer in Cameroon. That was the high moment for me, you know, to learn by experience, to learn by doing, interacting with people in Cameroon. Classroom learning can be, let's face it, artificial at times. The Worldwide Learning Environment Project allowed that classroom to become real in different ways. And so the students, when they did go to Paris, said, this is what this was all about when we learned it in class. And there really is a world out here where this is happening. And now we're part of it and we're interacting with the artists. I focused on the course that dealt with the art of Paul Gauguin. And we worked with two visiting scholars at the University of Edinburgh, so here at the very tippy top. The students had the opportunity to read this essay, but instead of it being abstract, written by some person named Belinda Thompson, they actually got to talk with Belinda Thompson via video conferencing. The video conferencing aspect is huge. It's a great, it's just an amazing part of the class. We can talk about someone's work on Tuesday, read their work, and then on Thursday, we're talking to that expert. That's what happens. The undergraduates come in, they punch in an IP address, they're talking to their peers in other universities around the world and engaging in research projects that they work on, submit to their professors, and sometimes even publish. In my project, we worked on a cross-cultural collaboration between music education students here at Case Western Reserve University and the students at Shenyang Conservatory in Shenyang, China. Our semester culminated with a celebration, which was a Skype conference. It was a really spontaneous and joyful event with students saying, I'm John, and then the student on the other end saying, I'm, I'm the one that you've been talking to, and making that eye contact and that, that rec recognition. There is no better way than to be face-to-face -face to stimulate collaboration. And a, a, having a, a portable way to, to bring that experience into, into laboratories is what the um, McGregor Fund has allowed us to do. My project involved uh, comparative ethics, and the idea was to compare how uh, American students uh, might solve or understand uh, ethical problems as compared to students in Japan. And so the centerpiece of this particular project was uh, working with uh, a very famous problem called the trolley problem. We uh, gathered in Second Life, the virtual uh, reality world. Uh, all the students had their avatars, and we interacted. It is expensive <laughs> to program in Second Life. Uh, you need experts, and that was what uh, the funding provided for. It provided uh, netbooks that the students utilized uh, during the project, also digital cameras and digital recorders, as well as a camcorder that was used for the interviews that were conducted both before and after their research projects. It enabled me 
to invite the Chinese professor from East China University to have a one-week visit at the campus here. And the student asked lots of questions because China has also very recent development the textbook could not cover. It really allowed me to expand how I look at some of the more important parts of my course, dementia caregiving being one of them, and really allowed the students to see firsthand, in a way, dementia caregiving and what it looks like in other parts of the world, and that engages them a lot more. Uh, than just me standing up there talking and telling them about things. The possibility of actually using this new technology to grow programs, to create something that couldn't exist before, this is the next step for higher education. The worldwide learning environment allows us the opportunity to connect Case Western all over the world for a global learning presence.